world wakes up with a cup of coffee. <laughs> Most of the world wakes up in the morning with a cup of coffee. What if by paying a little bit more for that cup of coffee that you drink every day anyway, you could help a family farmer uh, be able to have meat twice a week? Help a family farmer build a bigger house for his family? Help a family farmer to increase the number of land that he cultivates every year, uh, being able to provide more for his family. What if we could make that one small change? I'm going to challenge you to involve yourself in the coffee community and do that. You can improve the lives of subsistence farmer, coffee farmers in coffee producing countries just by spending an extra quarter a day. Coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world, next to oil. It's going uh, undergoing a boom right now in commodity pricing, which is actually bad for the, for the farmer, uh, because it tweaks the system so that it lures farmers into planting more coffee that can be used, and it will ultimately uh, drive to a crash. Right now, the commodity price of coffee is two dollars and seventy-two cents a pound. Um, that's nearly twice uh, what it was a year ago. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about coffee and about changing the world through coffee. Uh, my shop is on College Hill here in Easton. Where do I come from? I spent a life in education. Uh, 17 years coaching women's college volleyball. Uh, after 17 years, I found myself without a job. So. I had to find, I'm going to take this from Rich, wherever he is, I had to find my secret system. And coffee was my secret system, coffee was my redemption, coffee was my salvation. I started uh, Cosmic Cup uh, in 2005. And as I got into coffee, um, you hear a lot about different kinds of certifications, fair trade, organic, rainforest. Uh, bird, bird friendly, uh, all this kind of thing, and um, yeah, I started to investigate it, and so I learned a lot about fair trade. This is the fair trade certified logo. Uh, his name is actually Max Hevelar. Uh, fair trade movement began in Holland, uh, and in Europe, um, also began with the Mennonite Church. They formed a co-op called Ten Thousand Villages. Uh, they have stores all over the world that you can buy trade goods from uh, third world countries uh, at a fair trade price. In the late 90s, after a plummet in the price of coffee in the early 90s, the Transfair organization uh, was founded, and then a couple of years after that, the Fair Trade Labeling Organization are flow. So basically what they do is they certify coffee producing cooperatives. Um, and they look at their sustainable practices, they look at um, how the workers are treated, and then they guarantee a fair trade price. The guaranteed fair trade price is 20 cents a pound above what the commodity price is. On the outset, that sounds like a good idea, um, but like most agricultural subsidies, it encourages farmers to produce more which floods the market, driving down the price. And the other problem with uh, cert the certified fair trade model is it doesn't provide any quality incentives uh, for the farmers. So they just, it almost becomes like encouraging small farmers to go into agribusiness. Because their incentive is to produce more coffee, um, which ultimately drives the price down, and they still only get that 20 cents above fair trade uh, price. And so, as I investigated this, I became involved with um, an importer uh, from New York, uh, Jamie Schoenhut, uh, is with Royal Coffee, and then also uh, my roaster uh, out of Providence, Rhode Island, Rick Kleinfeld from New Harvest Coffee Roasters. And as we, as we advanced along in our, our professions, our businesses, um, we talked more about this fair trade model and about different models that could happen. And simultaneously, other coffee roasters and importers were doing the same thing. And this whole idea of direct trade uh, started to come to the forefront. 
And so direct trading, the basic idea of direct trading is the importer or roaster from the United States fixes a price with the farmer, and then everything else is added on to that after that. In a typical environment, the importer buys the coffee from an exporter at a certain price. And you don't know what the farmer was paid. You don't know how much the exporter took. You don't, you don't know how much was paid for transport. None of that. You're buying off an offer sheet that just gives you what your price is. So, you know, our thought was, let's turn that around a little bit. Uh, let's make sure that we know what the price of that coffee was. Um, so, one of the big ideas that I want to share with you today that just because something isn't certified fair trade doesn't mean that that was that that it was unfair trade. Um, because I firmly believe that anytime somebody tells me, "Hey, there's only one way to do this thing," I really start to ask questions. Then, um, so Rick Kleinfeld uh, from New Harvest came up with a uh, new paradigm, and we call that source direct. Uh, this is uh, the first farm uh, that we that we took into this Source Direct program. This is uh, Finca El Roble in uh, Mesa de los Santos, Colombia. Uh, Source Direct is an alternative to fair trade. Um, artisan roasters uh, need to connect with small producers to develop the highest quality coffee. Uh, by doing this, they're going to add inherent value into their product. This is difficult under the fair trade model, which is based on large cooperatives that produce huge mixed lots of coffee. So basically, you have these huge cooperatives. Everybody dumps their coffee in together, and it gets sold. And so it kind of waters down the, the quality of that coffee. You know, under this model, we consider coffee as an artisan food. Um, and this source direct method is a way for us to achieve new levels of quality with our farmer partners, and also to compensate them fairly for that. This whole idea of source direct, and what I, what I feel is uh, ethically sourced and fairly traded coffee, I think each person in the chain has responsibilities with that. The responsibility of the producer is to produce the best coffee that they can. For roasters, for coffee roasters, I think their obligation is to pay the fairest price based on quality, and roast the coffee in the best way to bring out the best in that coffee. Um, you know, coffee's like wine. It's really affected by the terroir that that coffee's grown in. You know, you could have one mountain, and on one side of the mountain, the coffee tastes a lot different, and it's a lot different quality than on the other side of the mountain. And there's also harvesting and processing methods that impact quality. But I think the roaster's job is to bring out the best in that coffee. Uh, and under the Source Direct model, we visit the farms at least once a year, checking up on the picking and processing practices, tasting coffee with growers, and comparing notes. Uh, and sometimes it involves pre-purchasing a whole crop of coffee months before. One of the huge problems in coffee is um, the term coyotes. Um, the guys who run around with a pickup truck a couple months before the harvest and offer cash uh, to farmers at much lower than the commodity price uh, to pre-buy their coffee. Um, and the farmer gets shortchanged because they need the cash right then and, and they, end up, they end up losing money on their crop. Under this model, we prepay pre at a special quality price. Um, for the farmer's crop. So they know that they can put all the effort, all the love into it that they can, um, and that they're going to get a great price for that, for that coffee. I think retailers have a responsibility in this model. Uh, our responsibility is to prepare that coffee in a way that brings out the best in that coffee, the way it was roasted. Uh, and I also think the retailer has a responsibility to communicate with the consumer. You should be able to ask me where my coffee comes from. I should be able to tell you that. Um, and it, I mean, like a lot of things in life, I take that to the next level. So my shirt today is Carlos Logan. 
he's our coffee farmer that we have a relationship with in Costa Rica. I mean, why should Che Guevara have the market on the t-shirts, right? <laughs> um, but I really feel that you know, the coffee farmer is the rock star in our, in our coffee shop. And uh, we try and, we try and uh, support that any way we can. And I think the final, the final link in this chain is you, the consumer. I think you have a responsibility. Every time you purchase something, anywhere, whatever it is, you're making a vote with the dollar that you spend on that, whatever it is. If it's a, if it's a cheeseburger, you know, if you, if you buy it from McDonald's, it's much different than buying it from Porter's Pub in downtown Houston. Um, you know, one has a greater impact in your community and probably in the world than the other. Um, and it, it's the same, and it's, I think, more so with coffee. Um, you know, you have the opportunity to buy a great coffee produced by a farmer who takes his job seriously and wants to provide the best coffee. Um, or you can, you can buy a cup of coffee from the Mick Cafe um, that was dubiously sourced and probably grown on a really large farm uh, somewhere, and the impact on that is not going to be nearly the same. I think you, I think you owe it to yourself, and I think you owe it to producers to talk to merchants, check them out, check their game. You know, ask them where their stuff comes from, be it coffee, be it food, uh, whatever you're buying. I want to talk now a little bit about where where this uh, new system of source direct has made a difference. Uh, the gentleman with the light blue shirt and the hat in the middle there is Oswaldo Acevedo. Um, he's, the, he's the owner of Finca El Roble in Colombia um, that I just talk, talked about before. Um, Oswaldo's reinvesting money in his community and he can't be certified fair trade because it's a family owned farm. There's a picker. Um, you know, a lot of Colombian people are short, no offense. Uh, <laughs> well, but he has a rope on his foot with a hook on it. They have to hook the top, drag the tree down, and pick each green off of there. Um, when you're doing it in a quality method, um, you're only picking at, at the peak of ripeness. So you have to make three passes. As well, those pickers are paid twice the average of other pickers in Colombia. Here they're bringing the coffee into the beneficio or processing center to be weighed and depulped. This is the school. Mis Valores is the school um, the, that's right outside of the farm. Um, Oswaldo helped build that school. Uh, Royal Coffee provided computers for that school. And New Harvest Coffee Roasters provided additional computers for that school last year. This is the church right outside of uh, Ficao Roble. Uh, Oswaldo also helped to build that church. Um, in addition, he uh, provides health care for workers. And um, the whole farm itself has been kept, uh, the natural uh, watersheds have been kept intact. Uh, so they, they're, able to, they're able to irrigate the farm from the rainfall that they get every year. Uh, and they use all natural fertilizers. This is Carlos. This is the man on my t-shirt. Uh, Carlos uh, owns Finca El Alto in the Corazzo region of uh, Costa Rica. Uh, and he was a Cup of Excellence winner uh, two years ago. And that's where I got to know his coffee. Uh, and then last year, uh, we bought a whole bunch of his coffee. And this year, we're buying coffee from not only his farm, but his two brothers. Uh, and this is, this is kind of the magic of this, discovering the quality, because through his quality coffee, his brother's plots of land, which are right aside of it, um, also get the recognition, and now the whole family is getting a better price for their quality. And they've, uh, they've been able to uh, increase their acreage, uh, and also uh, they have more stability uh, because they have a long-term contract to sell that coffee at a higher price. Just last month, I was in Honduras, and these are my these are my buddies, uh, Dolfo um, and Bertilio um, Portillo. Uh, Port, uh, Portillo is a Cup of Excellence winner. 
and uh, Adolfo is a Cup of Excellence finalist. And the money there, the extra money that they got through Cup of Excellence has made a huge difference uh, in their lives. They've doubled the acreage that they farmed. They've gone from this kind of a house, just a plank board house, um, to a cinder block house, uh, twice the size. They've been able to build their own beneficio to process their coffee, um, and their lives are much better for it. Uh, this is um, Esteban Chavez. Uh, this year, I bought his coffee in the Honduras Cup of Excellence auction. Um, and I was able to visit him uh, a month ago. Uh, but Esteban uh, used, used to have to drive a bus in addition to farming coffee. He doesn't have to buy, drive a bus anymore. Uh, him and his son, Franklin, uh, have uh, been able to work out long-term arrangements with buyers uh, through uh, getting recognition in Cup of Excellence, and they've diversified their business. They've built a large beneficial or processing center so not only do they process their own coffee, but they're able to process their neighbors and make some money doing that. And they opened up a little family store. And this is me on uh, Esteban's uh, farm, El Sauce, um, getting in with the coffee. Um, the future for coffee uh, is a little bit sketchy right now because of the volatility of the market. Anytime you have such a big bubble like they're experiencing now, um, there's going to be a correction at some time. And I think it's by working out a more direct source, working out a better fair trade system, that we can guarantee farmers a sustainable price over time so that their lives are not held hostage to fluctuations in the marketplace. Um, if you build this relationship on trust, and teach farmers that if they grow better quality coffee, they're going to add inherent value to the crop and won't need uh, outside price supports uh, like certifications. And don't get me wrong, I think certifications have their place. Um, I think it's important that every farm sells all their coffee in order to make money and sometimes to get a better price for the lower quality coffee, something like fair trade makes sense. But when you can when you can command a dollar forty-five over the commodity price for having especially great coffee, I think that makes sense than only getting twenty cents a pound over commodity price uh, just because it's fairly traded. So I challenge you when you leave here today, every time you purchase a cup of coffee, think about Carlos, think about Oswaldo, think about the Portillos, um, and make an informed choice. Thank you very much.